What's up everyone, Evgeny Genchev here with yet another video of Sweet Struggle. On here, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience both as a performer and as a teacher to help you bring your playing to the next level and assist you on your musical journey. <laughs> When you practice difficult passages in music, it can often be challenging. It takes a lot of repetition, so you might also need a new approach. Practicing with rhythmical patterns helps you achieve that. It gives you additional physical and mental stability and comfort. This will help you develop your technical facilities further, and it will certainly help you to play with a greater feeling of ease. As the list I'm going to show you today goes on, the rhythmical patterns are going to get increasingly difficult. See which ones work the best for you and the music that you're practicing and make sure you're spending enough time on each one. So you can start from wherever you feel comfortable and practice your way up. To be showing you all of them, I'll be using the prelude of Bach in C minor from the first book of the Well-Tempered Clavier. I probably shouldn't be abusing this piece with such rhythmical patterns, but for some reason it feels right, so there we go. Or maybe just my brain has gone off. Either or, it happens. To Johann Sebastian, I'm sorry, Maestro, Papa Bach, Godfather, forgive me. Before we start though, I do need to put a bit of a warning, a bit of a disclaimer. You know, before you go off and you go crazy with these, just need to make sure that I put in the warning ahead of the tools, you know. So here's the warning. At first, before you get accustomed to these, they're most probably gonna mess with your head. So make sure you put the music in front of you as a reference point. Also, make sure you keep your hands, your arms as relaxed as possible. These are not supposed to get you more tense. They're supposed to just help you in your weak points. But we can discuss more on that later. And now, patterns. Number one is playing four plus four. That means playing four slow notes, then four fast notes. It's a fantastic way to start. It's a classic. It will definitely get you going. It will allow you to pace yourself. When you're done doing it, swap it around and play four fast, four slow. Second one on the list is two plus two. Getting a little bit more intense here, you play too slow, then too fast. And then you flip it over and you play too fast, then too slow. Number three is dotted rhythm. Or alternatively, you can think of this as one slow, one fast. You can think of this as a dotted quarter note with an eighth note. You can think of it as a double dotted, triple dotted, whatever floats your boat, whatever you're trying to achieve. You can adjust the speed to your liking and to the difficulty that you want. Do remember though that you need to keep relaxed. You gotta stay relaxed. The idea of this pattern is to practice a quick shift between the two notes, but then have enough time to prepare for the next one. So once you get to the long note, don't just sit on it. You need to make sure that you prepare for the next one. You can see that as soon as I play one note, I prepare my finger to press the next one. Often when we play, our fingers and our brains create ranking between the notes. And that's fine because there are strong beats and there are weaker beats, there are accents, there are peaks and there are lows. So it's completely natural. But what this does is it makes some of the notes not as defined because we're just marking through them. Our fingers 
are not as active when they go through them. After all, they're not as important musically, no? Now, if they weren't, the composer wouldn't have written them. Because you know how much fuss it takes, especially back in the day, to write anything with this feather that they were using. It was a nightmare, so definitely not. All of the notes have a certain role, so by practicing this rhythmical pattern, you're gradually gonna acquire a greater control over how you play each one of them, and you will be able to perform them with a better control and greater precision. I do remind you once again though, once you get to that long note, you need to make sure that there is no tension. If you've got any tension when you're practicing this, then you really need to slow it down and pay attention to your shoulders and wrists. Number four is triplets. Basically, whatever you're playing, it now goes into triplets. This will definitely give you more flexibility on where you put the emphasis and reveal those weak points. You might even feel that all of a sudden you forgot the piece because somehow everything has fallen out of order. This is a really healthy exercise because it helps us erase those accents that we do every four notes. It helps us get rid of that subconscious division that we keep on doing. Your brain might hurt a little bit from this, but it will benefit you and you'll experience much greater level of comfort after this practice. Number five is held note or let's just say one slow, three fast. probably see that this is like an extension of the dotted rhythm pattern. The same rules apply, but shortly you will also see why this pattern is so high in the difficulty ranking. Let's see how we are supposed to flip this pattern. Initially the first note is slow, next three notes are fast. One is long, the others are short. To flip it, then we make the second one long and the rest of the notes short. That means the third, the fourth and the first are gonna be short and the second is gonna be held for longer. This will be confusing at first so remember to keep the score in front of you. Then you will do the same thing holding the third note for longer then the fourth note. This pattern may mess with you a little bit, but it's also gonna be super beneficial. As always, please remember to keep your wrists flexible and your shoulders relaxed. And last but definitely not least, the creme de la creme. The exotic beast that I call Balkan division. You will see why. What you need to know when you practice this pattern is to play as if you're in the irregular meter of 7-8. Since the Balkan folk music is full of these rhythms, it's also part of this folklore horo dance. So this couldn't have been named any other way. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely check it out. So the way irregular meters work is they combine both simple and compound time within the same bar or measure, whatever you like to call it. In our case, 7-8 would have two groups of twos and one group of threes. If you apply these groups to the 4-4 four four score, this is the result. You probably notice that this shifts it completely and makes it totally out of whack. You cannot really predict where the next accent in the original text will fall onto, so unless you're really comfortable with the music, you will find this very challenging. But at the same time, like, mm, so much fun. The way you would swap this is by moving the group of three to a different place. So if we currently had it in two plus two plus three, now let's try to shift it to two plus three plus two. So the group of three goes in the middle. Yes, 
That's what I'm talking about. Mm. I'm ready to start dancing on this. And again, please, Papa Bach, pardon me for this, but this is just mm, so fun. Lastly, we switch the group to be in the beginning. So we do it three plus two plus two. Such a great way to practice and also have fun. Needless to say, when you practice this, it will give you a lot of elasticity, comfort and ease. Balkans are just great. Aren't they? You may say that this pattern is perhaps something that defines the sweet struggle mentality. So you should have fun with it. So there you go, guys. These are the six rhythmical patterns. I hope they help you in your practice. You can also play around with some other elements of the music, but I will leave this topic for some other time. If you've got any thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already in order to get notified every time I come up with a new video like this. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.